You're listening to the Huddle Up Podcast with Chad Jensen and Zach Kelberman. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com and sound off. And now it's time to drop some knowledge. We are live, the Huddle Up Podcast coming to you on this Wednesday evening. If you're in the Rocky Mountains, it is snowing like crazy. This is the Huddle Up Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Jensen. And with me, as always, my partner in crime. You know him. You love him. As the lead NFL writer for Heavy.com, he is Zach Kelberman. Zach, how are you hanging this Thanksgiving Eve, man? I'm doing pretty well. I'm excited about the news that we're going to have to talk about today, Chad. That kind of made my holiday a little better after the Broncos <laughs> yeah. ruined it last week in that in that god awful game that we should not speak of anymore. No kidding, man. Look, we're gonna we're gonna dive into everything Fangio had to say today, including what Elway had to say as it relates to Drew Locke watch. Even though they didn't quite get around to making any sort of declaration or announcement, I think fans can start getting a little bit more excited and have something yeah. to look forward to on Sunday. And we're going to dive into it all, but just a couple of quick reminders, you guys, and then we'll get to uh, the storylines for today and uh, welcome everybody in, in the comment stream. Make sure you are following the show on Twitter at huddle up pod today, as you have all probably figured by now, we're going live about an hour earlier than we usually do. Uh, And it's mostly due because, you know, we got family, it's Thanksgiving, travel arrangements, things are happening. So we had to move up the timetable and we announced that on Twitter. So that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure you're following the show there. You stay on top of everything in real time. Take care of that business at Huddle Up Pod. And then don't forget, take some time, head over to Apple Podcasts, leave a creative review on the show. If you like what Zach and I are doing, give us a five-star rating. goes a long way towards supporting the show, and it enters you into our giveaway drawing. As you can see, the hat I'm wearing, the shirt that Zach's wearing, some swag that we'll be giving away uh, to two randomly selected reviewers. And we'll announce that first of next week. So take care of that. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. All right, let me just welcome in here. I know a lot of you have been hanging out for a little bit in the room, especially on YouTube. Let me just uh, impart some greetings here. JT, Stu, what's up? Buona Beast, Noble Young, Nick. Welcome in, everybody. So let's uh, let's go ahead and rewind the clock just for a minute here to 1130 this morning, local time in uh, Colorado. Vic Fangio gets to the podium and you know, I'd like to think everybody was waiting with bated breath, Zach, but unfortunately, John Elway kind of stole his thunder when he went on a KOA earlier in the morning and basically said that, no, we're, we, we're not officially announcing that Drew Locke's going to be the starter yet, but what we are announcing to the public is that we're going to increase his, his reps with the first team. So the last two weeks, he's received about eight to 10 reps during, during practice with the first team offense, which represents about 25% of the total snaps or reps, he's going to be getting Zach three quarters of the reps this week. So he's still splitting reps with Brandon Allen. And Vic Fangio basically said, well, he was asked, when are you going to make the decision? How long is it going to take? You know, what's this going to – he said it could take all the way up until game time, Zach, before they ultimately announce. But all of the signs, all of the messaging, all the talking points, they're basically telegraphing that Locke's going to to be the starter without officially announcing it. Yeah, we know it, but we don't know it at the same time. And we talked about this on yesterday's pod and the pod a couple days ago. It's all about com- competitive advantage for Vic Fangio. Even in a lost season, it's just the way he's wired and the way he types. He likes to coach. He wants to take it down to the wire because he doesn't want to show his cards. He doesn't want to give anything away. He wants to make the Chargers prepare and game plan for both quarterbacks. I don't know how much work they have to put in for Brandon Allen, but Drew Locke is a whole non-entity. They don't even know anything about him. They have no film on him yet. So throwing him out there, I think, it's they can do it. It's not surprising Fangio is doing that and going through that that kind of uh, the circus. But we know. We know already it's coming. 75% of snaps after being on IR, after not practicing, they are getting ready for him to play. And I can't be more excited because I really did think we were going to have to wait the last couple weeks of the season. I know. I had I had resigned myself anyway till week sixteen, Detroit, but Brandon Allen was so bad last week that the Broncos it's it's sparking a change, it's sparking a shift. Now Fangio was asked directly, and by the way, Chris, thank you very much thank you, Chris. for your donation, $21 on Super Chat. He says, very thankful with the potential lock news. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Chris. Football preach. You Amen, yours, thank brother. you. 
And by the way, Chris, reach out to us on uh, – shoot us an email with your address and shirt size. You have been a consistent contributor and supporter, one of our Super Chat superstars. So we're going to send you out a little thank you, some some swag, some Huddle Up podcast. So when you get a minute, go ahead and send us an email with your personal deets and your shirt size. Um, but, Zach, you know, it was we've kind of been wondering, well, maybe the Broncos will just go ahead and activate Locke to the 53 – but not necessarily play him and keep Brandon Allen as the starter this week. Well, Vic Fangio didn't completely shut that down as a possibility, but as it relates to the topic specifically of how important is it that Drew Locke serves at least one game as a dressed backup before he starts, Fangio said it's not important at all. That doesn't matter at all. What's exciting is that even if he is the backup for this game, if he doesn't start, it's it's – a certainty he will be starting by next week's game. So either now or one week later, we're going to see Drew Locke in action. And like I said, it's a few weeks at least earlier than both of us thought, and I think a lot of Broncos country thought. And it's just more audition time. He couldn't do it with two games. You can make the case he's he can't do it in five, six games, but he needs as much time as possible, and I think they're tilting it in his favor. Last week's performance, or lack thereof, was the best thing that could have happened to them. It was a true blessing in disguise to get back Locke on the field. Well, and that's the thing is, if you've already come to the decision as an organization that, look, we got to move the needle, we got to make a change. You know, we wanted to wait till 2020 to debut Locke, but, you know, this baby's coming and we got to get ready to, to give birth to the Drew Locke era. If, if that's going to happen, if you've already made that decision as an organization, Zach, why wait until his, why, why wait to make his debut a road match. You know, next week uh, right. the Broncos have to go on the road two weeks in a row. So if you wait until next week to start Drew Locke, you're exposing him to two consecutive road games. And even though Fangio himself, I can't remember what day it was earlier this week, might have even been late last week, you know, hey, the topic of isn't it ideal to debut Drew Locke at home or are you okay with maybe debuting him on the road? He's not afraid of starting Drew Locke on the road because, as Fangio said, look, you know, it's not like when you become a starting quarterback, you get to avoid playing on the road. That's going to happen. He's, he's going to have to go take those lumps. But the stars have aligned. What I'm getting at here is, yeah, maybe worst case they play him next week, but I think all the stars are aligning. And, Zach, even if you look at what his teammates talked about, even today, Cortland Sutton, if you read between the lines, I can pull up a few of his his quotes and uh, read them to our, our listeners here, but – it just sounds like everyone's been told, yeah, we're going to go with Locke, but we're going to wait to announce it just because we want to keep the Chargers on their toes as long as possible. It's the only thing at this point. And, yeah. and to, and to your point about the road game, I mean, there's no perfect situation for Drew Locke. I'm not coming at you, Chad, and just in general, the way the sure. Broncos are thinking here, there's no perfect situation. They don't have a, a, a true letdown opponent on the schedule. They don't have the Dolphins. They don't have the Bengals. And even if they did, those are still NFL caliber defenses. He's going to have to go out there. He's going to have to play on the road in Denver and snow and rain, no matter what, in sun. He has to do it in every condition, every type of situation. That's what potential franchise quarterbacks can bring to the table so we should know right away or at least in a few couple games he's going to play what he can bring to the team what he can bring to the offense is he the answer but number one was getting him on the field and I love the fact they're not waiting any longer and dragging their heels and slow rolling this you can make the case he should never even been on injured reserve that should have been to Bryce Callahan so they wasted long enough now they wasted enough time as possible get him on the field let's go by the way, big thank you to JT with a 10-pound donation Appreciate from across you. the pond. He says, could not be more excited for this news. The dominoes are falling now. Next up, Garrett Holt. <laughs> and by the way, JT, I'm sure you saw my response to your email. We've got your personal details there in the UK, and we will be sending you some uh, a personal thank you from Zach and I here in the very near yes. future. So keep an eye out for that. But And again, big thanks to our, our Super Chat superstars. I mean, Zach and I, we're – thinking frantically of ways to repay and show our thanks to those of you who support the show financially. I mean, it's, it's everything. And it's why today on a Wednesday evening, when a lot of people are, are, you know, packing it in and they're holing up, especially in the Rockies with this weather for Thanksgiving, Zach and I were moving our schedule around so that we can still come to you and break down, especially on a day like today, where there was some, some real Broncos news Mm -hmm. to analyze. We want to be there for you guys. And when we see that kind of support, and on a live hangout like this, on a live podcast, it just makes it all the much more worthwhile for us to spend the time. So thank you guys. 
I, Chad and I talk about it off air all the time. It's it's so humbling, and we're so appreciative and grateful for just you guys being in the room with us. Let alone any donations we receive, uh, we're very humbled by it. We love bringing this pod this pod to you and introducing new things. And like Chad said, we have some things cooking. We have some hats coming out. We have some hoodies coming out. We have some rewards for our loyal followers and listeners. You guys, it hasn't gone unnoticed. And we want to reach out to every one of you, and we appreciate every single one of you. Yep. And each one of you were thankful. I mean, on this, the spirit of Thanksgiving, we are grateful and thankful for you Definitely. guys truly. And not to, not to make this a big gusher, but you know, we appreciate you guys. So Nicholas here, $5 donation. Thank on you, Nicholas. Chat. He says, I just found you guys a couple weeks ago. Real good channel. You guys are awesome. I think Locke will be the guy thoughts. Now, if by that, Nick, you mean you think he's going to be this named the starter, or if you're saying that he's got what it takes to be the guy, the guy is in terms of franchise. What do you think, Zach? At this point, you know, we've we've only had a limited sample size of Drew Locke as a pro, two and a half games, let's say, in, in preseason before that thumb. What what have you seen that might lead you or encourage you to think that he has what it takes to develop into being the guy? Well, I mean, what is there to go on, though, aside from his college tape? In the preseason, he was very limited, and he was kind of erratic, and he'll tell you that himself. And I think that was the precipice, or that was the uh, that was the catalyst, excuse me, for the Broncos uh, delaying his, his, his playing time this year because of how he looked in the preseason. Whether he's a franchise quarterback, that cannot be answered right now. It, even from the most homerific Broncos fan, Broncos media member, it cannot be answered. We don't even know yet. He can be a bust. But that's also the thing is, we don't know what we have in him yet. We don't know what we're going to see yet. We know everything else. We know Flacco. We know Brandon Allen. We know even Brett Rippon. We don't know what Drew lock, but going on what he did in Missouri, going on at least how he progressed in the preseason from week one to week two, that's encouraging. And behind the scenes, the Broncos have been encouraged. And it seems in the locker room, everyone is talking with more excitement now. Everyone's talking with more passion now. And they're finally happy to get that guy on the field because they all know how talented he is. And they all know what kind of spark he could potentially bring to the franchise. And that's the big thing, man, is they, they need, whether he ends up being the guy or not, you guys, obviously the, everyone wants that. Everyone hopes Locke ends up being the answer. But even if he's not, the exciting thing about this move is it inches the Broncos closer to knowing that, having a sample size and more information with which to evaluate and hinge the future decisions of this team. Do you go into next year in free agency in the draft, building the nest around Drew Locke because he showed you something in these, this five-game audition? Or was it a catastrophe and you realize, goodness gracious, we got to do something different, and you go back to the well for another quarterback? Now, for what it's worth, Dick, I think personally my opinion on, on Drew Locke is that he has many of – he has franchise tools, all right? From, a, from the traits and skill set. I mean, you saw last week what it looks like when the difference between a first-round caliber arm in terms of arm talent going against a sixth-round caliber arm, okay? The wins, let's face it, go back and, and think of that Buffalo game. The wins were prevailing back and forth. It was pretty gnarly at times. Didn't seem to phase Josh Allen when it came to putting right. some mustard on that sucker. But Brandon Allen, it completely stopped him and the Broncos' offense in its tracks. Drew Locke has an arm that's closer to Josh Allen than it is anywhere even close to, to Brandon Allen. He's got, he had arguably the, the strongest arm in that class. I think most draft Knicks, it was pretty unanimous. Drew Locke, from an arm talent perspective, I guess is pretty close with Kyler Murray. But still, those guys were right there in terms of arm talent, strength. And you, you think of his, his athletic skill set, his ability to get outside the pocket, move around Zach. And he's the anti Paxton Lynch, just with what he's shown us so far in terms of his dedication to the physical and intellectual demands of the game and, you know, practicing the playbook, repeating the play calls in the mirror to himself, really pushing himself and just also learning about from him what he's done over that 10 week exile while he was on right. IR to ensure that he was as on point with what the Broncos were practicing the playbook as possible from doing the VR twice, watching the, the, the practice in real time, and then going through and doing the VR of each practice twice. I mean, these are all encouraging things. It's all part of the puzzle. You know, you're trying to see the tapestry, the full picture right now, but you can't. All you're seeing, it's like a beautiful painting in the Louvre right now, and all you can really see, it's all blocked off by a curtain except the corner. And that corner looks dang good, but you kind of got some hints of what the rest of the picture looks right. like. We're getting closer to understanding what the rest of that looks like. 
That's a really, really great analogy, Chad. It's a great way to put it, and we're encouraged by what we see from that little sliver from what we see. It's, it looks exciting. It looks enticing, but we anything else could be under that the rest of that picture. Anything else could be hidden from us. True. We do not know yet. I and Chad and a lot of other people happen to think that Drew Locke will pan out with the Broncos. He is going to end that drought at quarterback for them. The one thing I am looking forward to, though, not so much touchdowns, not so much interceptions or wins and losses, is proving – on the field, he is not Paxton Lynch, proving yeah. he is the complete antithesis of him. And you'll see that within the first couple snaps. He'll have more fire, he'll lead the huddle better, and he'll have more love for the game and more fire outwardly than Lynch ever showed in Denver. Stu, one of our most consistent Super Chat superstars, jumping in with a $25 Thank donation you, on Super Chat. And Stu, by the way, you have some some gear coming out to you. Make sure you let us know when you get that and tweet us and uh, let us see see that shirt in uh, all its natural glory. Mm-hmm. He says, which roster spot gets swapped for Locke? Zach, at this stage, he was asked, Fangio today, whether or not uh, – basically, he didn't ex- answer it d- directly, but would you keep – if you activate Locke to make him the starter, would you keep Brett Rippon as the backup? And he said, probably not, which means that – when that corresponding roster move has to be made, when they waive someone to trim, you know, to make sure they stay at 53, odds are it's going to be Brett Rippon. And that's another reason, Zach, why they're probably waiting till later in the week because it increases the odds that they can sneak him back to the practice squad. It's a great point, and it's true. And and they don't really need – they have two young guys. They have Allen. They have Drew Locke. They don't need three young guys, and two of them offer the same skill set in Allen and Rippon. So, yeah, I can see him being the sacrificial lamb, and the Broncos want to keep him around. And like just like Chad said, they're going to wait as long as they can here because it's easier to do that on a Saturday or a Friday than it is on a, on a Wednesday. Broncos fan number 24 with a $10 donation Thank on you. Super Chat. Appreciate Happy you. Thanksgiving, guys. You guys, along with today's Three Lock News, are one of the few things Broncos fan <laughs> have to look forward to. Well, that's very humbling. Appreciate you saying that. Um, and by the way, also, Broncos fan, you've been consistent. So email us, and, and we're putting together a list of all our most consistent Super Chat superstars. So milehighhuddle at gmail.com. Shoot us an email with your address and shirt size, Broncos fan number 24. But, I mean, that's one of the things is, you know, it also, at covering the team, I mean, we look forward to these opportunities to talk to you guys because it's a break from the usual. It's a break from, you know, blogging it out on the – on the uh, laptop or, you know, making a video or doing anything else. Our opportunity, right. not only for Zach and I to talk to each other, but these live hangouts on, on Google or on uh, YouTube and Facebook allows us to talk to you guys. And that breaks up the monotony. So we appreciate you. Yeah, and you know, it's not just Drew Locke. It, there's other positives in Broncos country right now. You have Cortland Sutton. You have so much young talent on that team. Philip Lindsay, Reiser. I can go down the list. There are some glimpses, and there's a nucleus in place, and there's fan blossoming. You're going to see the – quarterback of the future and lock playing with him and playing in this offense. There's a lot to look forward to in the future. It, it's been tough lately. It's been tough this season, but Broncos country, I'm telling you right now, if lock pans out, they're going to be a really good team. I think in the next decade, one guy's opinion says I'm hoping for no more wins so that we can get the best draft pick possible. And I don't blame you by the way, Nick Kendall um, published an article today. And those of you who are listening to this on Thursday on, on Wednesday, he published an article, which is, the you know the guilt free way basically to root for the tank without actually rooting for the Broncos to lose. So go check out that article. There is a way. Uh, Andrew says, "Let's get Locke in there ASAP." Even though my expectations are low, I didn't like him in a, as a system quarterback at Missouri. But anything is better than this. Every team in the NFL evaluated Locke and decided no. Sad that we have found ourselves in this position at quarterback. Elway, of all people, should understand how important QB is. And Andrew, while that's a fair point, you got to keep in it. And it's absolutely accurate to say every team in the NFL passed on Drew Locke in the in the first round. He dropped to the second round. However, not every team went into that draft with quarterback even on the big board. I mean, about half of that first round quarterback drafting a quarterback anywhere in the premium rounds wasn't even a consideration. So it's more it's a more fair thing to say, I think, Zach, that the, the quarterback, every quarterback needy team passed on Drew Locke in the first round, with the exception of, well, I guess all of them did, to, if you really boil it mm-hmm. down. But the Broncos, Zach, they were able to have their cake, eat it too. They got no offense. They stacked a couple of third-round picks. They got Dalton Reisner and Drew Locke. 
And I think that'll eventually come back to uh, pay some dividends for him. If, if not in these remaining five games, 2020 and beyond. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can say what you want about his draft status. You can say what you want about his time at Missouri. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But look at, and this is a classic example, but look at Tom Brady. That's a sixth-round draft pick. He was passed up a lot, and people are still regretting that to this day. So it doesn't matter where he was drafted. It doesn't even matter what he put on tape in Missouri. It matters what he does in a Broncos uniform when he steps on the field. He has a chance, possibly starting this Sunday, to be the quarterback for the next decade plus. No matter who you are, where you came from, or his, what you think of his background, you have to be encouraged by that aspect. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. JT says, I listened to Drew Locke's interviews earlier, and he handles himself very, very well. He is the complete opposite to a Paxton Lynch. He's natural uh, with his leadership skills, and that's absolutely true. Um, and as someone who's spoken to Drew Locke in person, he, I've, uh, you guys have heard me say this before, but he just has it, you know, in terms of charisma and presence. He's QB1, and yep. he can, you know, light up a room. He can control the attention of a room. I mean, Paxton Lynch, every time he got up in front of the mic, man, you could tell that he was like – this was outside his his ken, like outside his reckoning. This was very, made him very uncomfortable. And even though he started to kind of acclimate to that over time, you just didn't see that sharp, you know, the light in his eyes that he's ready for anything and, and the charisma. Drew Locke absolutely has that set. Yeah, if, because when, when Lynch was up there, he wasn't playing Fortnite chats. So you have to forgive him a little bit. He wasn't going to play his video games. But yeah, you know, yeah. it's he's going to get up. He's going to get on the field, Drew Locke, and he's going to show every Broncos fan. He's more like a Chad Kelly than he is a Paxton Lynch. And we all know how many Broncos fans love Kelly. He just has that fire and that that alpha mentality, that it factor. It cannot be bought. It cannot be taught. It cannot be instilled. You are born with it or you're not. Paxton Lynch was not, and Drew Locke was. That's the most exciting aspect when you compare those two quarterbacks. Keith, uh, Keith says, I want a shirt. Keith, you are watching the show right now, listening also on Facebook. Right now, the shirts we have made up, you there are for our Super Chat donors on YouTube. All right, so if you want to listen to the show on YouTube and contribute, you're on the list, my friend. Or in the very near future, uh, and when I say very near, I mean within the next probably two-week window, <clears throat> excuse me, before Christmas, well before Christmas, we're going to actually have a merch store for you guys uh, with shirts, hats, huddle up and mile high huddle hoodies, all kinds of different swag. So it's up to you. If uh, you want to look at that, you can cruise over and, and watch the show and contribute on YouTube or wait till we debut that store. A uh, couple more here, guys, and then we will let you get back to enjoying your Thanksgiving Eve here. Let's see. John, $5 donation. Thank you, John. Chat. Appreciate you. He says, what do you guys project the Broncos will draft with the first round pick? And do you think Elway might draft Justin Herbert. Zach, if there's a quarterback in this class that I could see Elway going after, it is Justin Herbert. Yeah. But again, that's a question, you know, it's it's completely contingent on how Locke does in these final five games. I think he's going to do fine. You know, he's going to bump his head. There'll be ups and downs. There will be a trial by fire. I mean, it's, it's a crucible, the NFL. I think he has what it takes to hang. And if you look at his four-year career at Missouri, I mean, he started as a freshman. I mean, he – was exposed to the fire right out of the gates. And it wasn't always pretty, but he battled through and continued to progress as the time wore on. I think I think the Broncos are going to go into next year's draft trying to build the nest as opposed to going back to the well for another quarterback. That's just, you know, that's just how I predicted unfolding. And Zach, when that happens, it's got to be offensive tackle. It's got to be hopefully Andrew Thomas or Tristan Wirfs yep. or it's my a pick. corner. Yeah, I, I if I had a crystal ball, I wouldn't be doing this show right now. Neither would you, Chad. So we can't we can't look into the future. But I will say that there's any quarterback in this class, with the exception of Burrow, that Elway has already scouted and been on record as liking. It is Herbert. I will say that I think Locke will do enough to um, dissuade the Broncos from going quarterback in round one. They might take a quarterback next year. They might you know trade for one, but they're not going to go with their first round pick. Locke will do enough to enter him in a competition at the minimum to be the starter. In that scenario, it's either it has to be an offensive tackle to me. If it's not the top one, it may be worse. I don't see a corner. I don't see a quarterback. You've got to go offensive tackle. Juwan James looking like a lemon. Uh, Garrett Bowles being Garrett Bowles. I mean, you're you're at a bad situation right now. You don't have yeah. edge protectors on either side, and you want to start a franchise quarterback. To me, it's got to be tackle. It's got to be tackle. And I wrote about the Juwan James situation. I think it was last night. Um, sometimes when you're cranking out content, the days run together. But the way the Broncos have ran, or I should say the way the Broncos have managed 
the Juwan James situation. It is just bizarre. Go check out the article I published. It's up at milehighhuddle.com. Some of you probably also watched the video on it on uh, YouTube, but it's just, you don't know what to expect. And, you know, you hear guys like uh, our draft guys, like Nick Kendall, Carl Dummler, Eric Trickle, who are paying attention to depth charts all across the league. They're, they're scouting the draft and they're scouting free agency and, and veterans. And Juwan James is a guy who is basically available to play every other year. It seems like every other year, he has some nick, you know, he gets banged up. And what might cost the average NFL player, like, for example, when he got he, – he did suffer a knee sprain, all right? That did happen in the season opener. But what was supposed to be a four- to six-week timetable, Zach, metamorphosized into – he ended up coming back in week eight, which was seven weeks later. That lasted 22 plays before he was down for the count again. And he has a reputation as, an in, as being an injury milker, as yeah. being soft – so far, his first year in Denver has done nothing to dissuade or, or refute that reputation. So it would behoove the Broncos to get back in the saddle on offensive tackle, especially considering what's going on with Garrett Bowles in this coming draft. And there are some, some top tackles in this class that could really solve the problem. Now, Jordan jumping in, also sporting a very handsome <laughs> hat that looks very familiar. $25 donation. Thank on you, Jordan. Chat. Appreciate you, bro. He says, it does seem like good timing for Luck. Patrick's back. Fant is starting to shine. Sutton's dominance. Plus, we have a losing record, so it lessens the pressure. Happy Turkey Day. Three Fs. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, though I think that all adds up, man. Like people, you can get negative and, and myopic and, and take that pessimistic view of saying, man. This is the last thing you want to do is expose Drew Locke to the NFL with an offensive line like this, you know, two tackles you can't trust and da-da-da. And even Fangio spoke to that today. You know, hey, how how can you uh, take confidence in debuting a player like Drew Locke, a young quarterback, when, you know, you might give up three or four sacks? And Fangio was actually quite dismissive of the notion, Zach. He's not too worried about it. Um, I think you got a, a pretty strong interior, even though they're all pretty banged up right now in Reisner, McGovern, and Leary. <clears throat> and the good thing about Locke is he is young and he, his athleticism is going to help – or should, ostensibly, all right, help him to, you know, evade some of that pressure, get some moving pockets. If Scangarello's smart and he dials it up, kind of similar to the way Brandon Allen was put in a position to succeed in yeah. week nine, especially against the, the Cleveland Browns, then all of a sudden you saw Scangarello kind of go away from some of the things that we saw working for him early on those first six quarters, Brandon Allen was, was playing, but if they go back to the well and kind of structure things around drew lock, I'm really not that worried about this offensive line. So everything Jordan's saying about the stars aligning from a skill position perspective. Yeah, man, lock's got some weapons. I mean, it could be a lot worse. Look at the, the Cardinals. They have Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, and then a, a broken down David Johnson and revolving door offensive line. I mean, that's the number one overall pick in that situation. So they have the Broncos, aside from Bowles, a, a pretty average offensive line. They have weapons in the backfield. They have weapons at receiver, at tight end. It could be a worse situation for them. And to your point, Chad, about the, the play calling under Scangarello, he was actually, I think, finding his groove with a younger play caller, but Allen wasn't hitting those throws. He didn't have the arm to hit downfield to Sutton, to Patrick, those bomb passes. Those are the passes that Locke will hit. Those are the passes that take advantage of his arm strength. So once he gets on the field, he's going to have some, obviously some plays that can roll out moving pocket play action, but, uh, but coming off the seven step drop, looking yeah. down the field and hitting Sutton for a long ball, that becomes a possibility and that becomes a staple, not just a hope. Absolutely. And by the way, <clears throat> Solomon, it's good to see you. My brother, we've got your address and shirt size. You have been all, I mean, the last month, especially a, a consistent contributor on Super Chat. So you will, uh, you got something in the mail coming your way. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, one or two more guys, then we got to get out of here from Buana Beast. Thoughts on possibility of targeting Jack Conklin in free agency if he or Jawan James uh, to left tackle? You know, I'm not opposed to the idea. I, I get a little scared when you start talking about John Elway throwing money at a, at a free agent tackle <laughs> just based on the, the best predictor of future behavior being past behavior. And, you know, the first couple of years Conklin was in the league, Zach, you know, he was a pro bowler. He did very well for the Tennessee Titans being the bookend to Taylor Lewan there, but he struggled the last little bit. So he's, he's not quite as attractive of an option uh, of an option, but you know, who just hit, and is coming back out of free agent or out of uh, retirement is Jared Veldier. Maybe you bring him back. Of all the options Elway tried to find to solve that right tackle, 
Valdir honestly was probably the most consistent, even though he wasn't perfect last year and he did miss a little bit of time with injury. Valdir was probably the best solution Elway was able to find, which makes it curious why they didn't try to keep him around and instead went and dumped $51 million into Juwan James, Mm -hmm. who's given him 32 snaps. But hey, if I'm Elway, I'm getting on the phone, Zach. I'm calling my dude, you know, he's six foot eight, Jared Valdir, freaking Mr. Olympia himself, and saying, hey, Mm -hmm. here's a vet minimum. You know, maybe you've realized you had some bills to pay. You're coming back to the league. Here's what I'll do. Come back and at least be depth. Yeah, it's funny you say that. We're sharing a brain. I tweeted about this yesterday. He only had one holding call of Eldir with the Broncos last year. He would be a monumental upgrade on Garrett Bowles. Anyone would. You and I would. The only thing is I'm going to kill your dreams. I believe the Packers claimed Valdir off waivers today. Or oh, did, did they, they? Yeah, did they, they, they own his rights that, now. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted that too. I mean, you put, you put a literal turnstile at left tackle. He will be an upgrade on Garrett Bowles. Anyone. I don't, I'm not the biggest Conklin fan, but anyone you have to try now. I prefer a rookie, but I wouldn't be opposed to bringing in new blood. You're going to have to try something. He's not working out. All right, last one here from Steve, and then we're going to wish you guys a good evening. He says, which current quarterback does Locke remind you guys the most of? Zach, for me, it's like a it's like a mix between – and, you know, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying anything here. But it's like a mix between Patrick Mahomes – and Ryan Tannehill. Hmm. That's... Well, Matthew Stafford, I'd throw him in there as well. Kind of an amalgamation of those three dudes. The Titans Tannehill, not the Dolphins Tannehill. Right, right. <laughs> I, see, I see a lot of Jay Cutler personally and, and Drew yeah. Locke. Just that big arm, that cocky personality. And like Chad said, they have that. That Mahomes, he was compared to him in the pre-draft process. We're not saying he's the next Mahomes, but he has the arm talent and he has the mobility to, to be the type of dual threat quarterback. Either way, though, if he even comes close to reaching his projections or his ceiling, the Broncos have a good quarterback on their hands. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on a uh, earlier-than-usual scheduled podcast. Make sure you're following the show on Twitter, at HuddleUpPod. Again, that's the best way to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening with the show. News updates in real time. Zach and I keep you guys apprised on Twitter. And then you can see where to follow my partner here and find him on Twitter at Kelberman NFL, myself at Chad and Jensen. Here's what to expect in the next couple of days with it being Thanksgiving from a programming perspective. If you're listening to this on the podcast after the fact, you're listening to this on Thursday on Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving Friday. You will have, you will wake up to a fresh episode of building the Broncos, which will be the scouts. I preview in the podcast RSS feed. So wherever you subscribe to the pod, that'll be waiting for you. And then Zach and I are going to return Friday night for the last huddle up podcast of this week, the mile high mailbag at 6 PM mountain, 8 PM Eastern. We'll send out a reminder uh, to everybody because normally we would go Sunday, the gut reaction Monday day off on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but it's with the the Thanksgiving holiday being right here. uh, We're going to, we're going to skip tomorrow. And we're going to come to you Friday night. So stay tuned for that at 6. And in the meantime, you guys have yourselves a great Thanksgiving. We are ultimately grateful for each and every one yes. of you that listen and support the show and read what we do on on uh, the website. So appreciate all you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. And to you, my friend, my partner in crime. To you, too. Stay safe, everyone. Chad, stay safe. Have a good time with your family. And we'll, we'll talk to you guys soon. All right, guys. For Zach Kelberman, I'm Chad Jensen. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you on Friday. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.